All right, guys, you ready to watch this Super Mario Bros. speed run? Well, too bad we're opening Ixalan. So I really like this set a lot, which I'm sure is a pretty common opinion. It's got vampires and dinosaurs and pirates. And if you're not into one or all of those things, you should probably go get some form of counseling because there's definitely something wrong with you. But I've opened a kit. I've seen a lot of kits open, but this will be the first full box. So let's get started with pack one. I'm just going to skip these commons and uh, see we got a uh, makeshift munitions, uh, vine shaper mystic, and lightning strike. Awesome reprint. That's going to really help standard a lot. I think a lot of people are happy to see that back. And the Phil flagship, uh, kind of like a pirate lord and uh, crew three, when it hits them, they discard. That's pretty solid. Um, the crew cost, we got a foil here. Uh, one, three for two. Uh, when it explores, you put a one, one counter on it and gain three. That's not a bad little uncommon. Uh, but that flagship is nice because, you know, obviously you're gonna be playing it in a pirate deck, so it's gonna pump your pirates and thus make the crew requirement that much easier. So it's not a bad little card. All right, next pack gives us a rigging runner, a steadfast armasaur, a multicolored land, a really dollar store version of Cavern of Souls, and the gorging uh, Gay Pride Ceratops, who is a 3-3 three, three for 7 with double strike, and when he attacks, everybody gets double strike. And another foil, uh, Dead Eye Plunderers. Uh, gets 1-1 one, one for each artifact you control, and you can create some of those uh, treasure mana doodads. 3-3 uh, three, three for 5, I don't know, probably not super playable but it's a neat little card and uh, third pack we get to Raiders Wake uh, Drover of the Mighty a regular version of that dude we just pulled and a uh, deep root champion 1-1 one, one for 2 uh, when you cast a non-creature spell this guy gets pumped uh, that's I don't know it's not a bad bad card that could get out of control pretty quick and another foil which is uh, instant speed exile target creature you control okay so just a flicker card and you draw a card if it's a pirate so uh, obviously better in certain decks man we've gotten three for three on uh foils maybe this is some fluke box where every pack has a foil true story i once saw a uh, box of fifth edition open that had um Every card in every pack was a rare. 15 rares per pack. Uh, now we get a Lookout's Dispersal. That's a pretty solid little uncommon counter spell. Uh, Vicious Conquistador. This guy's really sweet. One, two for one. And when he attacks, they lose a life. So you get in those last couple points of damage. Uh, Air Elemental, terrible card. And the uh, Sword Point Diplomacy, you reveal the top three cards of your library for each of those cards, put that card into your hand unless any opponent pays three. That's uh, interesting. I mean, you know, you can get to a point in the game where that could almost be draw three for three because they can't afford to pay three for anything, but I don't know. Situational. Time will tell on that one. Right, now we got a uh, Wanted Scoundrels, uh, Pillar of Origins, the Dire Fleet Captain, and another foil, uh, Sentinel Totem. Uh, it's a, oh yeah, this is basically a uh, version of uh, Tormod Script or something. Now there's a foil before the rare, which tells me that, I believe that means this rare is going to be a flip card, so uh, it is... And I don't know what this one is. Uh, pay two life to draw a card, black enchantment, and turns into um, the Temple of Aklazots, which is um, 
add a black or sacrifice a creature and oh like a elephant's graveyard it's kind of neat what's the flip requirement uh beginning of your upkeep if you have five or, oh geez so you gotta whittle yourself down pretty low and then you can start gaining life uh i can see that maybe having implications in death shadowy type stuff that likes lowering their life and then if for some reason maybe you could get some kind of recursion going where you gain in sack to do something it's kind of a neat card i like all these flip cards honestly i think they're just pretty much all playable or at least kind of fun uh favorable winds flying pumper uh bellowing aegisaur uh thundering spine back dinosaur lord guy and uh captivating crew uh gain control of gain control of a focusing camera there we go gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn you untap it it gets haste and yeah there's been a million versions of these kind of things but the fact that you can just do it over and over and over and uh, four powered body for four i mean it's a pirate you know it's got tribal implications that's a pretty interesting card and this set really doesn't have just a ton of full-on junk like everything looks either playable like competitively or at least fun commander just not a lot of just actual trash so here's a uh, crew one four three for three vehicle that's not awful got a little merfolk another captain and uh to to honor guard maybe not sure how you say that word one three for dose uh creatures in the battery field do not cause abilities to trigger that's pretty solid there's a lot of slots that that could take up for several formats it's uh probably gonna see some play somewhere and now we got a vine shaper mystic steadfast armasaur sky terror and one of the old reprint corset lands uh this one's green red and you put it in a play tapped unless you control a mountain or forest those are going to see just piles of play and standard due to lack of options and i mean they're not bad lands either they're you know solid dual lands but you know the reprints we've seen them a million times unless you're very new to the game uh next up uh emergent growth inspiring cleric uh Ixalan's binding this is a great uncommon o-ring and they can't replay copies or other cards of the same name while this is in play so you know that's a pretty neat twist for just one extra mana and herald of secret streams is a merfolk warrior two three for four creatures you control with one one counters on them can't be blocked wow that could just really end the game quite quickly i think the four mana will keep it out of a lot of the traditional merfolk stuff but uh i don't know is, or th is there like a lot of talk about merfolks in standard it just seems like it's dinosaur fever right now okay grim captain's call uh dark nourishment tempest caller and uh man these names are screwing with me T T telenali's skin shifter is what i'm going to call that and uh whenever what i just called that attacks it becomes a copy of another dude that's not legendary and yeah it's a zero one for three haste so kind of like a uh weird version of uh oh man i'm drawing a blank the uh little red critter that is legendary and taps and makes haste copies you guys know what i'm talking about i'm gonna put up a graphic that shows that card in post so that i feel less retarded uh all right now we got a kite cell freebooter a sentinel totem which is that tormod's crypt again uh emissary of sunrise and axis of morality uh at the beginning of your upkeep you may have two target players shane's life totals obviously you could use that in a one-on-one -on -one competitive format but i believe that has got to be intended for commander use and you could definitely buy a lot of diplomacy with that card seems certainly fun for the format all right uh now we got a wily goblin another dead eye plunderers 
a bonded horn crest, and a dream caller sky or siren. Uh, can only block creatures from flying when it is a battlefield. If you control a pirate, tap up to two target non land permanents, and it is a three three for four. Yeah, that's just you know kind of par for the course with this set. Just pretty, pretty solid for the casting calls, the stats, playability. It's just a decent card. All right, next one we got uh, elaborate fire cannon, trove of temptation, Merfolk branch walker, and okay, our second mythic is uh, Bona the Butcher of Megan, Magon. Majon something. I like Butcher of Megan. I like just, you know, screw chicks named Megan. Uh, Vigilance, Lifelink, uh, 4 4 for 5. And you can pay 7 to destroy target non land permanent on your turn. So this is, uh, I haven't heard a lot of talk about this card. I think it's possibly underrated. I mean, it's got Vigilance. So you swing in, you gain 4, then you pay 7. So basically, you're paying 3 life to, you know, kill almost any permanent. Uh, you get multiple activations. I mean, across consecutive turns not in one turn but uh i think that's a pretty solid card i mean that's a re really strong ability the fact that you can reuse it i don't know i don't know are people high on that card seems pretty good on paper but anyway uh this dude is such a great uncommon uh one one flying for one and it's kind of like a one shot spell sky just change or counter target spell or ability that targets you or a creature you control so basically you know you're going to force a lightning strike or whatever at this guy and i mean just coming out the gate just you know one drop evasion start you know getting some damage in useful ability it's going to soak up you know some kind of damage spell it's a great great uncommon and uh emissary of sunrise uh, chart a course and spell swindle so this is a uh, i don't like this card it's not awful it's just it's a five mana counter spell i understand that there's you know combos that people are speculating on and blah 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 but i don't think like finding some situational hole for one thing to use in one way does a great card make i mean it's not awful but i don't know it doesn't excite me at all uh and next we get a heartless pillage we get field of ruin uh as a can archer and another dual land sun petal grove the green white one and i am making like just weird stacks of cards there's no apparent rhyme or reason to what i'm doing <clears throat> all right next one we got uh Deep Root Waters, Deathless Ancient, uh, another Sky Terror, and uh, Settle the Wreckage. Uh, four mana instant, exile all attacking creatures, target player controls. That player may search his or her library for that many basic lands. Put, oh man, so it's like a just uh, path to exile on crack. Uh, you could do it to yourself if you say, you know, just generated some tokens, you know, and just swing some little worthless things in and get a bunch of lands you know obviously you can hit your opponent and ramp them into eldrazi's and whatnot but at least not get murdered by whatever's murdering you it's a pretty neat card and now we get a another emergent growth sheltering light uh, seeker squire and another new land which is dragon skull summit the Black red, ooh, and a full rare. Uh, Ashes of the Abhorrent. Uh, two mana enchantment. Players can't play spells from graveyards. Oh man, whenever a creature dies, you gain one life. That's an awesome sideboard card. That's definitely going to see some play. These are really good foils to have if you like um, speculating and stuff, like Stony Silence and some of those kind of cards. I mean, they used to be 50 cent, 99 cent regular rares, and then you could get foils for like you know maybe two bucks and now a lot of those cards are like twenty dollars so that's a pretty sweet foil uh stormfleet arsonist snapping sellback another lightning strike it's great and a rampaging ferocidon yeah this is like you know sort of kind of a little bit like a uh um oh god what's that card called the eidolon of the great revel just punishes comes out early and punishes your opponent for trying to you know keep up with your board state so uh and it's menace three three i mean players can't gain lives there's a lot going on with that card that could 
I mean, they could totally see a lot of play. And a foil, a uh, costly plunder, terrible removal card. It's not terrible, it's just more of a limited card. And it's actually not a removal card, it draws two cards because I just now read it. So I'm a giant liar and I'm gonna edit all that out. Uh, now we got a uh, Lookouts Dispersal. We got a Grim Captain's Call. Uh, Shavers of Nature, it's a neat little card. I like these kind of cards that just have a lot of variety on what they do, even if they're not, you know, competitively playable. And uh, Sorceress Spyglass, a two mana artifact, enters the battlefield, look at an opponent's hand, then name a card and activate abilities of that card can't be played unless they're mana abilities. So that's kind of neat, uh, doing it in advance. You know, there's a lot of those, you know, pick something in play and, you know, mitigate what they can do kind of cards, but, you know, doing it in advance, that's pretty neat. Okay, now we got uh, another Wily Goblin, and, uh, another thing I was just talking about, and Raptor Hatchling with uh, Death Gorge Scavenger. Three mana, three, two dinosaur, and when he enters the battlefield or attacks, you may exile a card from a graveyard. If a creature is exiled, you gain two life, and if it's non-creature... Okay, so this is, a, uh, you know, instead of uh, exiling creatures with a uh, old... Uh, man, I cannot think of the names of cards. Scavenging Ooze and just gaining life as their creatures and just doing nothing if they're um, non-creatures. That guy has a little more versatility to how he works and unfortunately he has to enter combat to keep triggering, which makes it a little better in that regard, but that's still, you know, he's a dinosaur too, so that gives him tribal implications. Uh, another cannon, another thundering doodad, a uh, marauding looter, haven't seen this one. Being your end step, if you're tapping creature, you may draw a card. If you do this, that's, you know, all right. Oh, and this is another, uh, isn't this a flip one? No, this one's just a, oh yeah, it is, it flips. So uh, basically you just crew this in attack. That's a pretty easy requirement to meet. Four colorless mana, four to crew, so a couple two twos. And uh, you literally just get in with this thing, right? When it attacks. Yeah, so as long as it survives combat, which it's, you know, it's a, uh, pretty fat bottom girl there uh yeah i mean that's a super easy requirement to meet and is it the lightning bolt one no it's the trading post so yeah it just turns into uh you know just a land with a bunch of options uh drawing this flat out draw or return target card from your graveyard to your hand i mean that's awesome i mean imagine if this was just a land and you could just lay that in play i mean it would be like a billion dollar card so that's uh Again, no idea where and how and whatever it's going to see play, but it sure seems great on paper. And for our next tricks, we got some Imperial Lancers, uh, Bright Reprisal, Seeker Squire, and uh, Vanquisher's Banner. I'm guessing this is some kind of pumpy thing. Five mana. In his battlefield, choose a creature. Yeah, it's just choose a lord and you start pumping things. And but uh when you cast one of those you draw a card so that's huge i mean that's just you know you could name a million things that are going to want to play that so uh pretty awesome especially like really fast elf decks and stuff that can really just ramp out quick and throw a million things out it's pretty awesome this set's just awesome i mean just dinosaurs dinosaurs and vampires uh, one one flying for one. That's already pretty decent. A uh, raging sword tooth. It's a cool name, cool art. And bishop of the bloodstained with a uh, arcane adaptation. Uh, oh yeah, I don't, I don't. I mean, I get what this card does and what you could use it for, but not very exciting. Just uh, turns everything into an additional creature type, tribal. You know, whatever. Now you can turn, have your merfolk dinosaur deck you've always dreamed of. And uh, speaking of belligerent Brontodon dinosaur, uh, this guy's awesome. Uh, you assign a combat damage with toughness instead of a uh, power. So, you know, your door and siege towery commandery type stuff just got more fun. Uh, slice in twain, that was like out of Scar's block. Uh, Danto Vanguard and ooh, another one, Legion's Landing. Man, these flip cards are so great. So you get a one, one lifelink vampire for one mana. That's already a pretty good deal. And I mean, cause you gotta factor in vampires, you're gonna be tribal. So you're probably gonna be pumping all your vampires and whatevering all your vampires. So it's not just gonna be a one, one. 
Uh, then you just have to attack with three or more dudes. This is already one. So just two more dudes and you transform, you get a white man of land and you can just at will make more of these vampires. I mean, that's just a great, great card. I mean, I don't know how impactful it's gonna be competitively. Maybe not at all, but oh, these lands are just so beautiful. Just never had a design quite like that. I like the treasure mappy vibe of it. And I really want some foil of these things, but I think that's a great card. I, I think if you play a, in a vampire deck, a one, one lifelink vampire for one is already playable and you never have to get past that. So it's a pretty awesome card. And uh, next up we got uh, favorable winds again, another kite seal doodad, another tempest dude. And another flip thing, uh, the compass, uh, you pay two, then you three and tap it, you search for basic, put it in your hand. If you're in step, you control seven or more lands, this thing gets transformed. So, you know, if you ain't got anything to do, you're never gonna miss a land drop. And eventually you're gonna wind up with a Spires of Orozca, which is a colorless land that uh, does a uh, Maze of Ith effect. So, I mean, Look, you've got a colorless ability with a colorless land that has a function that, you know, anybody could benefit from. So that's, you know, just zillion places I could find a home. I mean, digging up lands, having free mana is so easy in Commander. So, I mean, clearly that's got to go in tons of Commander decks. But I could see that in some mid-rangey standard stuff too. So Rallying Roar, uh, Perilous Voyage. Dead Eye Quartermaster and uh, Fathom Fleet Captain. Two one minutes for two uh, when it attacks. If you control another non-token pirate, you may pay two and make a token pirate that's a two two black. Oh wow, and it has menace too. So geez, that could uh, get out of hand pretty quick. Um, oh, that's pretty man intensive, you know, early game. If you drop this turn two and you know, you instead of playing a three drop, you just use that ability and you just end up with two twos. I mean, but then they're pirates, so you know you're gonna be pumping on them tribal and all that stuff so i don't know it could be pretty cool i think the pirate decks seem to be like they'd probably be black blue decks too so uh anyway uh we got a verdant rebirth we got a lurking chupacabra el spooky and uh bright reprisal again with revel in the riches so this is a card a lot of people are you know talking about comboing with that um dime store uh mana drain where you you know they tap out turn uh five whatever you counter it you put that many treasures into play then you play this thing and you know you have a billion treasures and you just win the game but also this is just a silly i mean you play this in commander and you damnation and everybody has the turn they're on to blow that thing up or you basically win the game i mean that's the most easy to hit um alternate win condition one of those kind of cards i think i've ever seen at least you know obviously i'm talking about commander be a little trickier to pull off in constructed but or competitive whatever uh, now we got a dust losing dreadnought a trove of temptation a fiery cannonade cannonade oh and a vraska relic seeker uh six mana six loyalty uh, plus two, you get a 2-2 uh, Pirate with Menace. Uh, neg three, you can destroy a artifact creature enchantment and you get a mana doodad for your trouble. And neg two, somebody's going to one. I mean, so uh, if you can get away with it, you know, you play her and she's at eight loyalty, you know, if you plus her, you know, so you just lay her down eight, next turn 10, and then bam, you know, one life. So that's definitely got to be uh, pretty, you know, dealt with pretty quick if you're sitting across from it uh, especially in commander where you know just games flow differently and you can get out and protect and work diplomacy into how you use that uh but i can see that being played pet competitively i mean that's some pretty strong abilities uh another one of those tormod crypty things a lightning red crew get our another raging sword tooth i really like the art on that one it's pretty cool everybody fighting off the big dinosaur and uh, Rivers Rebuke, uh, return all non-land permanents target player controls to their owner's hands. Uh, yeah, so that's like a uh, limited uh, cyclonic rift kind of thing. It's actually cheaper than rift overloaded, but you know, you just hit one person, but that's still 
super useful. I'm sure that'll at least pop up in Commander if nothing else. Looks like we've only hit, what, three Mythics and we got right at seven packs left. So hopefully we'll hit at least one more, something cool. Okay, we got Sheltering Light. We got uh, Dark Nourishment, Bellowing Aegisaur, and oh, Regisaur Alpha. So uh, this is so many people's favorite card in the set. It's so playable. I mean, you know, if you're gonna make a dinosaur centric set, you wanna make some cards that people are excited about beyond being dinosaurs. So this one just fills every role. It's just, it's a dinosaur, check. It's super playable, check. I mean, look at it, uh, four, four for five. So, you know, eh, who cares? Other dinosaurs, you can have haste. Eh, that's, that's good. Makes a 3-3 three, three dinosaur. So it puts a 3-3 three, three haste dinosaur into play. So now you got seven points of damage off five mana. Every dinosaur that comes out after it has haste. I mean, it's not legendary, so it can, you know, throw its friends, its cousins and brothers out. And then they all have mega haste. I mean, it's red, green, super aggressive colors, colors that can ramp, get it out faster. I mean, that's just a absolutely awesome card and everybody's really excited about it and everybody should be and if you're not then um you should probably be more receptive to being happy and you're probably a curmudgeon and your friends don't like you um heartless pillage another stupid air elemental uh snapping cell bag. i don't think i've seen this one in this box so we can spiny dinosaur and uh Priest of the Awakening Sun, one, one for one. At the beginning of your upkeep, you can reveal a dinosaur, you gain two life, that's sweet. Uh, you can sack this dude for five and uh, tutor a dinosaur. That's very cool. So yeah, I mean, that could almost be like, I mean, you can main deck that for sure, but you know, just the life gain could help in a, a lot of situations and at least soak up a burn spell to get you to knock it off. So that's probably gonna pop up somewhere. Uh, now we got a Ruthless Knave, River Sneak, uh, Savage Stomp, and okay, we got a flip card behind here. Please be the uh, Cradle. So Queen's Commission, make 2-2, two, two, uh, or 2-1-1 one, one Vampires of Lifelink, and not a Cradle, but this one's the Lightning Bolt, right? Yeah, so uh, this turns into a Red Land that you can pay three, tap it, and just uh, Lightning Bolt, whatever you want. That's just beyond useful, really cool, and I think it's a pretty easy requirement to me, right? Uh, you can your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. If it's not only a card, you may cast it. And then when you cast your third spell in a turn. So, I mean, that's mana intensive, but you're playing red. You know, you're going to have tons of like one drops and cheap little burn spells. So, not a ridiculously hard requirement to meet. And, I mean, the just value that gets you of being able to not, you know, have to be so card intensive on removing things or getting that last few points of damage through. I just love these transform cards. That's just the best cycle they've ever done of cards that flip. And now we got a dinosaur stampede. Sounds fun. Uh, Imperial Arasaur, Marauding Looter, and um, Kinjali Sunwing. Uh, flying creatures, your opponent's control, enter the battlefield tap. That's pretty cool. Uh, only hits flyers, but... Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's flying. I just jumbled that all together. It's all creatures your opponent control enter the battlefield tap, so... That's clearly better than what I said. And next to the last pack, uh, Dustborn, Sky Marcher. Got a Navigator's Ruin. Another Bishop of the Bloodstain with a Drowsing Dagger. This one uh, turns into the Lotus Veil. I have hit, I think, every single one of these things but the damn one I wanted. Uh, add three mana of any one color to your mana pool. I love this card. I love, you know, so obviously Commander, you know. You go turn one, one drop, uh, turn two, uh, mana Vault, cast this thing, equipped to one drop, swing to the guy that you didn't give these little doodads to, you flip it over, you get three more mana, you continue your turn, that's seven mana on turn two, I understand that that's some, you know, whatever scenario, but that's all Commander is, is just stacking your deck full of possible broken turn one, turn two, turn three, so that's just another one you now have. Very good card, good enough to possibly see standard play too. Uh, Sheltering Light, Navigator's Ruin, Walk Ye Old Plank, and Boneyard Parlay. Oh man, so I guess this is our final mythic, uh, seven mana, this is off to a bad start. Exile up to five target creature cards from graveyards and opponent separates those cards into two piles and you put cards from the pile of your choice. Okay, yeah, so it's like some weird creature refactor fiction 
reanimation something that's not terribly great. Seven mana is a lot to ask. Uh, come on, final pack. What do we have? Uh, Slice and Twain. Raptor Hatchling. Adonto Von Garden. Ha ha. Bishop of. Yeah, so this is like a just broke ass Sun Titan. Three, four for five vigilance when it attacks. I mean, it is just. It is a watered down Sun Titan. It's one mana cheaper. It attacks. You get a three or less creature, specifically Sun Titan hit anything. Uh, it's white. It's, you know, two white casting goals vigilance. It is just. What if you put sundial in the dryer and he shrank up a little still a good card though i also think it's like the uh draft weekend promo thing so go to your local stores and do some drafting so uh that was my box i think it was pretty mediocre um what do we get like uh this this is i I'm, I'm standing behind that this is a good foil at least for monetary reasons also this is a good foil tormont's crypt thing that'll be a few bucks um nothing else to care about then we got, um, let's see, that thing's okay. We got the dagger that turns into the Lotus Fell. It's pretty sweet. The lightning bolt land, uh, the Regisaur. We got Vraska. Uh, I like both of these flippy land thingies. Uh, who cares about that? The pump thing, another flip. We did, we did I think we got three of these lands. Uh, I really like this guy. I think he's, you know, possibly underrated. But we missed, you know, most of the big mythics. Uh, the green dinosaur can't be countered, hexproof dude. Uh, would have loved to have hit the cradle land. And I guess that's about it, really. I mean, everything else is just fun stuff and dinosaurs. So um, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it, you know, gives you a little insight into what you might find in a box. And, you know, just have fun. You know, this is a game, first and foremost. Like, go buy some of this. Draft with your friends. This is an awesome set, and I will see you next time. Hooray for dinosaurs! Now that you're all excited about this set, you should pay that positive energy forward and like this video, and you might as well subscribe while you're at it. And if you've come that far, leave a comment and watch some of this other magical content.